Raspberry Pi have updated the Raspberry Pi OS used on the single board computer. One of the new features is that the Raspberry Pi camera libraries have now been updated, now known as Pi Camera 2. This removes the need for the proprietary drivers. It now uses LibCamera, which is an open source camera library which can be interfaced with lots of projects. In this, I'm going to provide an introduction to the new camera library using a Raspberry Pi 3 and an official HQ high quality camera module. In my case, the camera is attached to a microscope lens. It will also be the same for the other Raspberry Pi cameras, although it's the high quality camera that needs special consideration due to the memory usage, which I'll explain later. For this, I'm using a fresh install of the latest Raspberry Pi OS. You can install this on older versions, but that involves more steps, particularly if you enabled legacy camera mode. I recommend a fresh install if possible. I'm going to look at the example camera software, how to overcome the problem with the contiguous memory allocator and how you can fix that. I'll be using VNC for the screen captures. Note that unlike the Pi Camera 1, I haven't enabled direct camera mode as the new library makes use of the standard X11 rather than writing direct to the screen. If you think this is going to be useful, please give it a like at any point during the video. That will help to share this so others get to find out about the new library and to see my examples. First, I'm going to perform a quick test to make sure the camera is detected correctly. Note that to use the Pi Camera 2, the legacy camera mode should be disabled. You do need I2C enabled. You can see that through the Raspberry Pi configuration. Under interfaces, just make sure that that's turned on. It, hopefully it's by default anyway. And you can now just run a preview by running libcamera-hello from the terminal. As you can see, there's a short preview displayed, so we know that the camera is connected and it's been recognized correctly. I'm now going to download some of the example software. It's available on a Git repository, so we can just use git clone. And it's https github.com, then raspberry pi, pi camera 2.git. And this is going to download it all into a directory called Pi Camera 2 on the computer. We can change to Pi Camera 2 and have a quick look. And you'll see there's an examples folder. And there's various programs in here. And one of the things we can do is we can do Python preview.py. And that will give us a preview. Ah, there we go, so it's running that okay. Now there's also a tools folder, so if we go to tools, in fact, sorry, there's the naps folder. There's, there are some tools, which is some tests and things, but it's the apps folder is the one I wanted. So this is going to give you an application that can be used to control the camera. Which is right, and this is uh, a problem that I said is something I'm going to look at, is that this is due to the uh, memory uh, allocation. So it failed to allocate buffers. The reason isn't because I've already run out of memory, but it needs a single allocation of contiguous memory space so we're going to have a look at how we can fix that. For this to work we need to change the CMA memory that stands for contiguous memory allocator. On a Raspberry Pi with one gigabyte of memory or less this is set to 256 megabytes. On the Raspberry Pi 4 with two gigabytes or more then it's usually set to 320 megabytes. For this I'm going to set mine to 320 megabytes. Remember this is a Raspberry Pi 3 so it has one gigabyte of memory. If you have a Pi with more memory, then you could increase that further, say to 384 megabytes or even 512 megabytes. 
And to do this, we are going to edit the boot.com. I'll use Vi, you could use the nano editor if you prefer. So it's slash boot slash config dot text. And then we're looking for a DT overlay with VC4 KMS V3D. So if I just do a search for that, which is the video driver. And what we want to do is just edit this line and just add CMA minus 320. And you could replace that with say 384 or 512 as I suggested. And for that to take effect, just save that. We now need to re reboot. Now that's rebooted, we should be able to try that again. Go to Pi Camera 2 and apps and the app full py and as you can see that's working now so this gives you access to various different options and allows you to capture this in an interactive way so we could just call this test JPEG and we'll just take a photo. And if we close that. The photo was saved in the directory that we were in. I didn't need to put the file extension on, but there we go. So that's captured that photo. And that's quite useful. So you could also just use the command line. There is an example on here, which I can show you. So Pi Camera 2, examples, and then capture jpeg will capture as a, J a jpeg file it's going to produce a preview first and then it will just capture the file and as you can see there's a file now called test.jpg jpeg the problem with this is that if you run that again then it's just going to overwrite that test.jpg file. As you can see, it's not created another file, it's just overwritten that. So what you could do is rename that before you run the capture again. One thing I like to do, particularly using my microscope, is to capture multiple images uh, one after the other. So I've created my own Python program based on these example codes to allow me to do that, and I'll show that next. So here's the code I've created. I'll open it in the Thony IDE and then we can have a quick look through it. So it's not huge, it's just just short of 50 lines long, which includes some spaces and the uh, comments. Import some libraries, we'll see those in use in a bit. And I'm using GPIO0 at this because I've got a button physically connected to the Raspberry Pi, and this makes it a lot more convenient rather than having to get to a keyboard. I can set my microscope up, focus it, press the button, move anything else I need, and just keep pressing the button to create the captures. Uh, so I use button and I've connected the button to GPIO pin number four. Uh, request is just to track whether I requested a capture or to quit the application, which we'll see in a bit. Sets up a preview and runs the preview. And this is all contained in one big loop, so it, it keeps running. Then there's another internal loop 
which checks if the button has been pressed. If so, then it says capture and break. Or if a key, the key Q is pressed, which stands for quit, followed by the enter key, then it'll detect that. Or if any other key is pressed, which includes just hitting the enter button, then it will assume that's a capture request. If the request is to quit the application, then it just breaks out that loop and closes. But if not, then it runs this capture. It captures to a directory which I've created in advance called captures and calls it microscoped, followed by a timestamp based around the year, month, day, hour, minutes and seconds dot uh, JPEG file. And then it repeats. So the significant parts are it uses GPIO zero for the button press and this is the, the part that does that and it uses select dot select for the key input. Python's a little bit frustrating it doesn't have an option just to look at whether any keys have been pressed without locking the code up. So that's what this is, does it just looks to see if a key's been pressed and if so then it, it uses readline. The only thing with this it does need you to hit enter key you can't just press q and quit straight away but it does the job that i wanted for here we can try that by clicking run and you see it brings up this preview thing now one thing you can do you can just press the button which is really what it's designed for as you can see the preview disappears takes the photo and then returns the preview or you can use the keyboard to take another and you can just hit enter into this shell here and that works. The one thing that doesn't work is the Q option. If I try and do that, then it doesn't work on here. So to stop when running in Thonny, just press stop. However, it does work correctly on the command line. So if you go to Named it microscope. So we've got that running, got the preview again, press the button, press the button, it captures it. If I want to use the keyboard, I do have to click onto here, but then I can click enter. And if I want to quit, I just press Q and enter. And that's just an initial program just to show you how this can be used. I may look at creating something a bit better, perhaps using Pygame or something like that. So it gives a, a better interface than this. But this has basically provided me what I need for now. And if I look in the captures folder, you can see it's captured each of those and it's got a date and the timestamp of when it was captured. So that way it's not overwriting any files. I hope you found this video useful. Did you see a hint of what my next video will be? The microscope was pointing at a Badger 2040, which I'll be using for programming a game. If you haven't yet subscribed, please click the subscribe button and click the notification icon to find out about that and other Maker videos coming in the future. I look forward to seeing you on a future video.